it's day 936, which is quite an important number because it's probably one of the best tractors that Fent's ever made, is a 936. So we'll probably have a closer look at a Fent 936 in a bit, means that it's day 936. So those that are new to the channel, I've been doing a video every day since the first day of lockdown in the UK, which was 936 days ago. So I'm going to find a tractor in the shed now in front of me. And I'm going to, the machine on the back's Bill's, he's a neighbour. So I'm going to go and take it back to us and drop it off. Then I'm going to put the fertiliser spreader on because it's really still. I've got a derogation to spread a little bit of fertiliser on some OSR to push it on a bit faster than the slugs and the pigeons, hopefully. Ah. So I want that tractor because it's got the screens in for the fertiliser spreader, but I'm going to have to move this one, this one, and probably the buggy to get it out the gap. Buggy gone, at the 7 7 up. There we go, get the tractor we actually want. We'll get what we want now, just checking. Uh, on the 936, funnily enough, the top link can weep slightly. Doesn't normally, but that one's for 8,000 hours. And when it weeps, the, the, what's on the back can pivot and push the tyres, sorry, the tines on here towards the tyres. Anyway, I'm just checking this hasn't before I get on it and jump on and back up. But yeah, it's fine, it's clearing the wheels. Turn the radio down. Um, I love this tractor though with this dashboard, I think it's cool. Gen 6 they call it when it's got the, like an iPad display. Just drop these legs down at the back and hope that they don't sink in. And look, Joe's pigs have come to say hello. That was a good impression of a pig I thought. There we go, all dropped off now. They're uh, grading spuds into the store this morning. Andrew's carting as well on the 936, I think he'll be back in a minute. Just putting him in an elevator and they stack it up as high as they can. And then it's got a ventilated floor, so they don't rot, keep them conditioned. Potatoes. There we go, 936 on day 936. Yeah, so this is one of the best tractors Fent ever made, if not the best. I must admit, I do prefer driving the 724 only because I'm lazy and it's got less steps to climb in you've got like one, two, three, four, five, six steps, whereas that's only got five, I think, or four. But uh, this is obviously was green. We painted it last year because it was broken. We were waiting for a dry shaft. This is a Gen, Gen 3, I think, not, or Gen 4. So it's not got the the frameless screen that the, the other one's got, the 724. And the dashboard is obviously the old style dashboard. But they have this for years, I think it's to call it the X5 cab. That joystick and this setup. I like it to be honest, everything falls to hand. Nicely colour coded. Um, climate control, all that kind of stuff. We've got a sunroof this one. But yeah, decent passenger seat. Whereas the reverse drive ones, the base you can drive them backwards and the dashboard and the steering wheel all pivot round, but then you end up with a rubbish passenger seat because the seat has to spin past here. But this is in a reverse drive, which is handy. Double wishbone and suspension on the front, which means it could do 65k. Not sure if it's legal in the UK, but it can do it. Uh, but yeah, proper tractor, so let's play homage to it on day 936. Phone rang, but anyway, Andrew's backed up now to the feed box, so he's gonna empty that trailer, probably take him about 20 minutes, and then he'll be back to the field to get another load. I'm gonna try and shoot up to where they're digging later and show you. This is where the mustard was and the OSR around the outside. Anyway, it's drilled with wheat. Looks absolutely awful until you turn sideways and you look down the road, you see the green stripes. All coming up. Ooh. Come on, Mister. Working somewhere else I'm on the Stewart's trailers. Yeah, so nice 
this luminous green rose coming up through the stubble. It's just from a distance, you can't see it at all. It doesn't look like it's drilled. This is where there's some OSR volunteers. It's just coming up nicely in the middle between the rows. Hopefully as well, doesn't seem to be much slug damage or any if, if that, because obviously the slugs are eating these. Lots of spiders webs, not sure if they're showing up on the camera. Um, there's spiders, it'll be eating aphids. You can see them all across here as well. No insecticide either, you see. Gonna go and check it inside now. Just back at Brookhouse now, there's some sort of normality returned. Uh, cleaners have done an amazing job getting it back to normal. Our lads came up and sorted all the sofas out that had been stacked in the other room. And uh, it is ready for the next guests. So they're coming this weekend, not sure what that's for. Possibly a Hindu. We like Hindus because they bring the parents and aunties with them and don't make much mess. And let's have a look outside. All that is ship shape and back to normal. Got a pile of logs in front of the spreader, so Rob's just going to lift it out so we can put it on easier. Out of the way, my dad loading the boiler with chip. Well, actually, the boiler is loaded with chip. He's done that this morning. He's just now on the drying floor to drive some more chip. Put the spreader on, I realise the shaft's on the wrong size spline, so we just have to change that round. 36 and put it on. He must have done, mustn't he? It looked like Andrew's took the shaft off the 936, so when we've come to swap them round, um, we've now got two 21 spline shafts. These are Bill's digging spots, great. Oh well, luckily we had a spare in the workshop, so we don't have to go and steal the one off the 936. There's bolts on there, you see, just makes it the right size shaft. That. On the air, uh, 939. Looks like you need a bath, though. His plugs weren't working anyway. Two of his 25-amp fuses had gone, so like that one and that one weren't working, but that was, so I just changed them for him while he's here. Easy job. Yeah, so they blow. That lifts up and the whole dashboard and the seat and everything just turn around. The spreader's on, we're just going to put a couple of bags of fertiliser in the spreader. Well, four actually. And then I've got one spare. That'll go on another field. I'm going to go to Lim. It's a 35 minute tractor right away, so we're just going to make sure we've got enough so I don't run out while I'm up there. But I'll fit it all in the spreader, four bags. Oh, I can probably fit six in actually. Rob forgot to bounce the bags, so they're a little bit solid, uh, which is a bit annoying. Just want to come out. Yeah, this is what we do. We, we just sort of like bounce them on the floor, and it sends a shock wave up the bag, so it, any lumps can break up. I've got to the field, and it's raining, but at least the fertiliser I'm spreading will start working straight away because it'll dissolve straight into the soil. It's quite patchy though in places, this, this OSR. It was sown really late and that's why we're trying to kick it on. But it's quite hard to see through the volunteer barley stubble. I can see in the spring we will just be picking the best bits probably and there might be some bits of the field that will write off and put a spring crop in. But like here, it looks okay. You can see it nicely here in the rows. This is actually on the stiffer ground where it holds a bit more moisture. So the other bit was probably a little bit too dry, perhaps. Take quickly. Jumped off to have a look and it, it's not a bad stand at all really on this field. Um, but for some reason I'm putting such a slow dose on. I don't know whether, because it rained on the way, I don't know whether it's got a bit damp and sticky around the shutters on the spreader. And it's not letting the fertiliser out. So I think I'm going to have to put the, the dose rate up higher to clear whatever's happening. And then hopefully should start coming out then. I think there's a bit of a build up in the bottom. Urea does not like damp days. Yes, yeah, so if you look in there, which is very hard to see, uh, somewhere there, it is jammed up. So I'm going to get this in the bottom. And I'm going to hope. Remember the field with the flood? It's gone. 
Yeah, this was the field that had the huge flood in it that we've drained. Um, the OSR is doing really well in the middle because it must be so fertile. Because they all, for years, it's obviously had inputs going on and they've never been used by any crop. So we still need to get down and dig it, dig it and finish off. Putting the rest of that pipe in, it's just left there, but the middle's great. I'm driving through it in the autumn, which is something I've never been able to do for years. We've got pigeons up here. It's hard to see actually through the window. We're in the other field now. They were in this one grazing it when I pulled in. Just like nipping them off right at the base. Eight pigeons. Fair few pheasants as well up here. Obviously they'll be eating a bit as well. I've just come back from spreading fertilizer at Lim and I called it Brook House because there's a party there this weekend and it's someone's 60th. So called into like the hot tub for them. And I was talking to the lady that was there and I said, oh, is it your birthday? She went, no, it's my daughter's. I thought she was 60, but she wasn't. She was 80. She's got a daughter that's 60. So I nearly wanted to take a picture because she looked so young. I thought it was a bit weird. We know you all love shopping at the weekend. <laughs> so a shameless merch plug. Ian's taking the load out now. We've still got loads of sort of things in stock. Um, check it out on the website. As always, agricontract.com. Say we've got loads of stock. We haven't, we haven't. It, uh, it depends what size you are really, so you'll have to sort of be quick. But Claire's making it as fast as she can. That was a right pain before, because when I was driving to the field, it was quite torrential rain. And they must have been coming up off the wheels of the tractor and under that red lip and finding its way into the hopper, which is never done before. You often get it a little bit sticky when it's damp, because I'm only putting such a low dose on, the shutter was only opening a tiny amount, and it got like a bit of damp stuff and it wouldn't flow. So I had to poke it with that fork that someone must have had for a pot noodle. Um, and then it, well it worked, then I opened it a lot wider and then carried on. And anyway, we've got to go to this last field now. It's that time of night we do the birthday bumper, so happy birthday Andrea, Tanner Morgan, George Osborne, Chris Johnson and Jack Keaton is it? So he's 14, so happy birthday everyone on there and anyone else whose birthday it is today. 13,244, getting lots of messages how to get on it. Scan that barcode or under every single video for the last three, four months is a link of how to get on the birthday bump up, but do it the morning of. Don't do it like three weeks before because it fell off the list. Because every day I log on to Just Giving and I look at all the comments for that day and that's how it makes it on it. Anyway, that's all for today. I'm gonna go in. Uh, if I want it steak for tea, should be good. So um, I'll see you all tomorrow. Hopefully it's gonna be drier, although it's forecasting more rain overnight. Oh, actually, I'll leave you with some of the uh, some of the footage of Andrew digging spuds yesterday because I never got up to the spud field to die in the end. So I'll see you later.